Do you remember them? Join us as we travel back in time to revisit these 10 old restaurants that we miss from the past. 1. Farrell's Ice Cream Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor was a beloved spot for sweets originating in 1963 in Portland, Oregon by Bob Farrell and Ken McCarthy. However, its popularity quickly spread beyond Oregon and Farrell's expanded its presence across the United States. Back in the 70s and 80s, Farrell's was the place to go for special occasions, especially birthdays. You couldn't miss the huge plates of food, waiters singing loudly, and train whistles that made your ears pop. From California to New York, Farrell's had locations in numerous states, each one offering the same experience of ice cream treats and a lively atmosphere. People loved it for its big ice cream sundaes and fun vibe. Each store looked like an old-fashioned ice cream shop with cool floors and servers in old clothes. They had lots of tasty treats like huge banana splits and big zoo sundaes. One famous thing about Farrell's was how they celebrated birthdays. The staff would come out with drums and sirens to give a special Sunday to the birthday person. Farrell's was always lively and fun. But as sales began to drop, many stores closed down. But for those who remember, it was a special place for happy memories. Let me know in the comments what memories you have of Farrell's ice cream. 2. Orange Julius in the 1920s, Julius Fried began selling his secret recipe of orange juice mixed with other ingredients at a small stand in Los Angeles. His drink became really popular, and in 1929, he opened his first store, naming it Orange Julius. The 1940s saw the brand expanding into malls and shopping centers, where it became a popular stop for those wanting a tasty drink while shopping. Who remembers the mascot? It was this funny devil guy holding a pitchfork with an orange on it. During this time, malls were becoming lively places for fun and hanging out. Orange Julius also started selling burgers and hot dogs at the store, giving them funny names like the mongrel and the pickle pooch. Families would spend whole afternoons wandering around the stores, stopping to enjoy treats like Orange Julius drinks. The atmosphere was fun. The malls were the perfect place for families to hang out together. Most teenagers who went there enjoyed shopping, eating, and chilling with their friends, with music playing and people talking as they walked around the mall. However, with more competition and changes in what people liked, many Orange Julius stores started closing in the 1990s, and that's when the brand started to decline. 3. Kenny Rogers Roasters opened its doors in 1991, founded by country music legend Kenny Rogers and John Y. Brown Jr. The restaurant offered a warm and inviting atmosphere with rustic decor and the comforting aroma of wood-fired chicken. It quickly became known for its flavorful chicken, slow roasted, along with a variety of homestyle side dishes like mashed potatoes, cornbread, coleslaw, and baked beans. You might recall that the chain gained even more popularity thanks to its famous dish, the Delicious Chicken, which was featured in an episode of Seinfeld titled The Chicken Roaster, making Kenny Rogers' Roasters the main storyline. However, the company encountered financial difficulties and filed for bankruptcy in 1998. Following the bankruptcy, Nathan's Famous acquired the Kenny Rogers Roasters brand in 1999. Subsequently, the brand was sold to a Malaysian conglomerate. Despite its challenges, Kenny Rogers Roasters continued to operate, especially in Asia, where it remained popular. Did you miss this place? Share with us. 4. York Steakhouse Who can forget the nostalgia that hits you when you hear about York Steakhouse? Just the mention of it brings back memories of sizzling sirloin on the grill, making your mouth water instantly. It was a popular restaurant chain that started in Columbus in 1966, similar to Ponderosa. Known for its cafeteria-style setup, often found in malls, General Mills bought it in 1977. And by 1982, there were almost 200 locations in 27 states. But as time went on, newer malls with food courts became more common, 
and York struggled to keep up. By the mid-1980s, sales were dropping and many locations closed down. The restaurant was famous for its steak and potatoes, and let's not forget about their legendary chocolate pudding for dessert. It was delicious. People loved it for its good food, service, and fair prices. The decor was cozy with dim lighting, wooden furniture, and iron chandeliers. Today, only one York Steakhouse is left in Columbus, Ohio. It's still run by the same family and draws both loyal customers and nostalgic visitors. People come from all over just to relive their memories of the place. Mentioning York Steakhouse brings back not just memories, but also the delicious smell of grilled steak, right? 5. Gino's Hamburgers Gino's Hamburgers was a classic fast food joint that captured the hearts and hunger of Americans in the 1950s. Founded by football legend Gino Marchetti and restaurant owner Lua Fisher in 1957, Gino's quickly became a popular destination for burger fans wanting delicious patties and crispy fries. The restaurants boasted a retro aesthetic with neon signs and chrome accents evoking the nostalgic charm of diners from yesteryear. The menu featured a variety of classic burgers, from the simple cheeseburger to the deluxe Gino Giant. Alongside the burgers, Gino's also offered milkshakes, french fries, and other tasty treats. Despite its initial success, Gino's hamburgers began to face challenges as the fast food landscape evolved. Increased competition from larger chains, changing consumer tastes, and economic pressures all contributed to the decline of Geno's. By the late 1980s, many Geno's locations had closed their doors, marking the end of an era for the beloved burger chain. Today, only the Towson and Glen Burnie locations are still open. Well, for those who were lucky enough to grow up enjoying Geno's burgers, those memories of that delicious giant taste will stay with you. Before we continue, Remember to subscribe to our channel. 6. Hot Sam Pretzels Have you ever had a soft pretzel? Hot Sam Pretzels originated in Michigan in 1966. The inaugural store launched in Detroit at Livonia Mall. Hot Sam's expanded as a chain, with stores situated in malls across the United States. Hot Sam Pretzels soon expanded beyond its humble beginnings, setting up shop in malls and shopping centers across the United States. Customers flocked to the distinctive red and yellow kiosks, enticed by the promise of a delicious and satisfying snack. As you walked past one of the shops, you couldn't resist the inviting smell of fresh, warm pretzels. The menu offered a variety of pretzel options, all soft, warm, and full of flavor, perfect with mustard, butter, or cream cheese. Despite its initial success, Hot Sam Pretzels faced challenges as consumer tastes shifted and competition increased. In 2005, the remaining Hot Sam restaurants became Pretzel Times. If you're a fan of Stranger Things on Netflix, you might have spotted Hot Sam's pretzels in the food court scene in Season 3. Go check it out. 7. Harvest House Coffee Shop They were the first ones to make the shopping experience we know today. In the 1960s, Woolworths launched Harvest House cafeterias in shopping malls, offering customers a sit-down atmosphere and a real restaurant experience while shopping. Some of the places had fancy decorations inside, like comfy leather seats, red carpet, brick walls, and big windows that let you see the rest of the mall. The Harvest House menu used to offer coffees, tea, sandwiches, and was also a great place for the whole family to have meals like chicken and mini sundaes or cheeseburgers. Despite its popularity, Harvest House Coffee Shop experienced a decline in 1990. Do you miss it? 8. Caramel Corn Founded by Bill O'Sullivan in 1929, Caramel Corn is an American popcorn retailer. Initially, they sold popcorn and caramel corn in downtown stores. Later, in the 1960s, they began selling their snacks in shopping malls, too. During the mid-century shopping mall craze, caramel corn expanded even more. Because malls were becoming so popular, 
the Caramel Popcorn Store started opening its own stores. Later in that decade, Dairy Queen, another popular food place in the mall, bought Caramel Corn. They combined the Caramel Corn name with other food brands they owned, like Dairy Queen and Orange Julius. As snacking habits changed and shopping malls became less popular, Caramel Corn stores also started to disappear. Now, for those who fondly remember that famous snack, you can buy their popcorn on the internet. 9. Morrison's Cafeteria Morrison's Cafeterias used to be a popular chain of restaurants where you could grab your food cafeteria style. It was really big in the 1950s and 1960s. The whole thing started back in 1920 in Mobile, Alabama by this guy named J.A. Morrison. He was kind of a pioneer because cafeterias weren't really a thing back then. People loved Morrison's because they served up real southern food, just like homemade. At one point, they had over 150 restaurants all over the place, and they were open every single day of the year. They had a huge menu with over 100 different homemade dishes to choose from. Then, Piccadilly, another cafeteria chain, bought Morrison's in 1998. Now, the only Morrison's Cafeteria left is the original one in Mobile, Alabama. 10. Britling Wing Cafeterias Britling Cafeterias was a chain of restaurants that started in Birmingham in 1917. It was the first restaurant in the South where you served yourself. The person who started it was named A.W.B. Johnson, not Britling. He thought Johnson's Cafeteria didn't sound cool enough so he picked the name from a story he liked, Mr. Britling Sees It Through by H.G. Wells. Even though Britling wasn't in food courts like we see today, you could find it in malls and shopping centers. Their slogan was, Good food is good health. However, despite its initial success, Swenson's eventually faced challenges leading to the closure of many locations over the years. Despite the setbacks, they still hold a special place in the memories of many. Share your stories with us in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.